Welcome to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast, where we deconstruct the methods, marketing, and mindset of successful business people and chiropractors from around the world. And now your host, Dr. Richard Day. Yes, I am Dr. Richard Day, and this is the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast. So nice to be with you again today. I am pumped today. I'm excited to share our next guest with you. She is a really a bundle of energy. I met her in an online community for entrepreneurs a few months ago, and I am amazed by her talent, her ambition, her skill, and her drive. She is not a chiropractor, and as you know, one of the goals of this podcast is to put chiropractors in touch with business people and entrepreneurs, not necessarily chiropractors. Well, our guest today is just that. Yulia Chernohovsky is a business strategist for health and wellness coaches. After after being a health coach for four years, she's made it her mission to help wellness entrepreneurs succeed by creating thriving online businesses and becoming the go-to influential experts in their field. Welcome, Yulia Chernohovsky. Thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here. You bet. We are thrilled to have you. Why don't you take us through your story? What prompted you to get healthy and why did you start Health Coach HQ? Yeah, <laughs> loaded question. Question there. Um, so <laughs> it all started the week before I graduated from undergrad. So um, I had just graduated and I went to a pulmonologist because I've had asthma since I was born. And I just wanted to kind of get a status check of where I was at with it, if I should change any of my medications or anything like that. And she had basically told me that my asthma had gotten so bad that by the time I'm 30, so I was 20 years old hearing this. And she said, by the time I'm 30, I would have an oxygen tank, which was literally my nightmare. And I'm sure anyone else's nightmare. Um, and so I freaked out. Um, but having like the type A super researchy uh, personality that I do, I started to research everything. So prior to that, I you know I had always tried to eat in a way that would make me lose weight. So I never really connected, you know, actual health with aesthetics. So I was just trying to lose weight, you know, diet, uh, diet food, whatever it is, that's what I would eat. And once this whole um, thing with my lungs came out, I was like, you know, I really need to take control of my health. So I started researching nutrition like crazy. I became a nutritionist. I have two nutritionist certifications. Um, I had finally you know, managed my asthma. I was feeling the best I ever had. My depression went away and I really wanted to pay it forward. Like I had just seen such an incredible transformation from within. Um, I was just like, you know what, this is going to be my career now. So I thought that, (laughs) um, you know, having these certifications and having a logo and having an LLC and, you know, making a social media profile and a website, I thought that, you know, I'd put that up there and people would come flocking through my doors asking me to save them. And that didn't happen. So what happened was, and what happens to a lot of new health coaches is full inbox, empty bank account. So people would ask me questions all day long about my experience because I was very public about my journey. Um, and yet I never, never made sales and you know, you got to eat, right? So I was just like, well, what's wrong with me? Why isn't this working? So I actually kept getting more certifications. I also became a yoga teacher, a Reiki practitioner. Like it was just, it was nuts how many certifications I got. And, um, so I invested a lot, but I didn't see any ROI because I didn't have that business acumen. So long story short, I I went into a PhD program to study cognitive science. So something that I'm really obsessed with is the mind and the brain. And I said, okay, well, school's something I'm good at. Let me just do this. You know, it didn't really work out with the coaching thing. And literally within the first month of school, I was like, no, like I need to be active. I need to be helping people, um, you know, change their health, change their lives and live their ultimate best life. So I ended up dropping out of the program. I hired a business coach. I got that support I needed on the business side of things. And my business took off. Um, and I really started to understand the gaps that a lot of health and wellness coaches have um, when they start out, which is that lack of business acumen. And when you don't have that, um, you, you can't get clients. So even if you're the best coach ever, you have all of this knowledge, if you don't know how to book clients, how to stand out in a multi-billion dollar industry, by the way, um, you know, you're not going to make it. And so I really 
shifted gears and became a business strategist, a business coach for health and wellness coaches. And that's why I started the Health Coach HQ because I see all of these amazing people. And, you know, just like me, nobody wakes up one day randomly and decides to become a health coach. It's usually the result of a really powerful transformation, either, you know, within themselves or somebody that they love. Um, and I really wanted to fill in those gaps and help these amazing people succeed in their business and actually make a living off of it and have a thriving business too. So that's kind of why I do what I do. And I am so in love with what I do. So I want to ask you, when you were in school, when you first um, you know, were told that you would one day maybe be on oxygen, what were you in school for? What was your degree? <laughs> I studied cognitive science, philosophy, and math. So all about the mind and logic and, yeah, totally not related to business at all. <laughs> so, but when you were younger, do you know what you wanted to be? You remember what you wanted to be when you grew up? Was it related at all? Yeah. Well, so when I was young, young, like elementary school, I wanted to be a doctor because I wanted to really help people and just, yeah, that, I mean, that's all I knew. I was like, I want to help people be healthy. Um, and then when I got older, I knew that I just really wanted to do philosophy and be a philosopher and be a teacher. Um, and so and now I think um, what I do now, it kind of perfectly lines up because it's the best of all worlds. I'm a teacher. I teach health and wellness coaches. I think, you know, as a result of what I do, I am helping people be healthy. So it kind of all worked itself in together. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason uh, I'm having you on the show today is because I think there's a lot of overlap or, or parallels between what you do as a health coach and what we do as chiropractors. Because we are caring for patients and helping them in that health or care arena, just like you are. Um, and, you know, getting people better isn't a one-sided affair, meaning we can't just, you know, take care 100% of themselves. They need to be engaged in that as well. So in a sense, we're kind of a health coach as well. And I've been really impressed with how quickly you've been in business. How long has a Health Coach HQ been around? So Health Coach HQ is a baby. It's uh, been around since April, actually, and we've experienced really, really rapid growth and recognition. So it's, yeah, sign I'm, sign I'm doing the right thing. Well, that's, I, you know, I'm blown away with how well you've utilized social media um, and all of the things that are available today that really even five years ago weren't as big as they are today. And uh, who is your end user or avatar? Who is the person you are seeking to be your clientele? So that person is, you know, honestly, who I was when I was failing for the first two years of my business. So I was a health coach for four and a half years. In the first two years, you know, I felt like there was something wrong with me because I had all of this health and nutrition information. I knew how to coach people. I really, 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 really wanted to coach people. Um, but I wasn't making any sales and I thought it was because there was something wrong with me when it was really just, you know, you don't know what you don't know. I always say that. Um, and when you don't know that you're not set up to succeed in business, you tend to blame your yourself or, you know, whatever the case may be, and you can fear giving up altogether. Um, and so my ideal client or my avatar is someone who really has that knowledge, who might even have a social media following, but they're having a really hard time monetizing or figuring out what they're an expert in or building that online expert authority presence. Um, and, you know, because like I said, the health and wellness industry is so saturated. It is the second biggest online industry right now. Um, so someone who is ready to stand out and crush it, but doesn't yet really know how to get there. Yeah, I think chiropractors find themselves in a similar situation. Um, newbies who are just starting out, um, and I can understand this because I was in this place myself at one time, but you know, if they if we build it, they will come and they don't come. Guess what? There's a whole other side <laughs> of attracting people and finding your end user and bringing them in that um, that, you know, it's it's not enough just to be really good. It's not enough to be really educated and very helpful and energetic. There's that whole other side to it. Um, and even if you've been in practice a while, I think, um, you know, it's an ongoing thing. You've always got to work at it. 
And, uh, and that's really the purpose of what we're trying to do is help point people in that direction to maybe help them to learn what, what it is that they don't know. Um, so take us through the ups and downs of the business launch process that you've gone through and, you know, what are some of the wins and what are some of the things that you say, oh, man, I wish I, <laughs> I, wish I knew that, you know, then. Mm -hmm. Well, I definitely want to add on to something you said, because this is definitely part of a launch is you can't just do that ideal client um, avatar and really understand who that is. Check it off the to do list and then forget about it. Right. You always, 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 always have to keep that person in the forefront. And that person might evolve as your business evolves, but they always need to be at the forefront of what you're doing. Is it serving them? Is it educating them? Is it benefiting them um, in order to really see business success? So um, as far as launching a business, that's really the first step is really figuring out who you want to help. Because, you know, at the end of the day, and I always kind of uh, shock people with this and they get a little mad or whatever, but I'm like, if you try to help everyone, you help no one. Now, that's not to say if you're someone who's not an ideal client comes knocking at the door, you say, hey, turn around, I'm not going to help you. But um, it's to really understand who specifically you're going to be talking to, what problems are you solving, what sort of information to share. And, you know, I work with a lot of um, multi-passionate, very talented, very intelligent people. And when you have a lot of information to share, um, it's hard to really pick on, you know, kind of an area to narrow in on. But that's really the first step is to become an expert. You have to be narrow with your focus, with who you're talking to and what you're talking about. Such After a, that. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say it's such a great point because, you know, I'll, I'll talk to chiropractors. Well, who's your, who, you, who do you serve? Who is your, you know, ideal patient? Uh, anyone with a pulse and a spine. And I think, well... <laughs> You know, you're competing yep. with every other chiropractor who's opened the door as wide as possible. And there's so much power, I think, in figuring out who that specific niche clientele is and really building a business around it. So I'm I'm sorry I jumped in there, but I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. No, you're absolutely right. And it's kind of there's so much marketing out there, whether it's chiropractic or health and wellness coaches. And if you open up your Facebook news feed or your email or whatever, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of things that are very generic. Like here's five tips on how to lose weight in like five minutes a day or you know what I mean? And um, in order to really, and I'm sure anyone who's listening, you've gotten an email from a business and you're like, wow, they're speaking to my soul. <laughs> like they know exactly what I need. I need to get over there right now and give them my money. Um, that's someone who has their ideal client clientele down and they know how to speak to them. So when you are generic, when you just say, you know, I want to help anyone who needs it, you can't really develop that relationship through your marketing, through how you talk to people, uh, because you're not really talking to anyone. So when you speak to that ideal person, you can speak, you know, to their soul, specifically to their pain points, and you develop that sense of no like and trust very quickly. And in order for someone to hand over their money to you, they got to know, like, and trust you. So I think that's very, very, very important. Um, if you don't have that, you don't have a, a business or it's going to be very difficult um, to stay in business. And even um, Coca-Cola, actually, my friend pointed this out, their slogan is about it's a feeling, so you want to create that sort of feeling with your messaging in order to stand out and that's how you do it. So figuring out who you're talking to, figuring out what you're the expert in and honestly figuring out like how you're going to serve people. So is it going to be if you're a coach, is it a one on one program? Is it a group program? You know, like how are you going to actually work with them and how are you going to price it? And I'll say that something a lot of people just do very quickly is their pricing. But there's so much that goes into it. And, um, you know, I really just wanted to say that because if you price yourself too low, you start to resent everyone who walks in your door. Mm -hmm. Um, if you price yourself too high, you know, I always say the worst thing that can happen is you price yourself too high. Somebody books you and you're like, oh shit, like, what do I do now? You know, can I live up to that price? Yeah, right. Um, and then you also really need to calculate like how much you need in order to stay in business, in order to live, in order to eat, um, 
and really factor that into your price as well. So I think that's definitely something that's a very delicate thing that a lot of people kind of overlook and don't take enough time to really calculate. Um, so definitely wanted to mention that as well. And honestly, the best thing you can do when you are starting out is just going out and doing it and seeing if it works. You know, don't be like me who got the logo and the website um, and paid for an LLC for a business that didn't generate any money for two years. Um, you know, get out there, test, see if it makes money, see if people are interested. And then, you know, you can get the logo and get everything like that. But done is better than perfect. So definitely just get out there, do the damn thing um, and figure out if it's what you want to do. As you've gone through the process, what have been some of your ups and downs? Yeah, so, you know, ups and downs, I think one thing that I really learned that helped me get a lot of ups is to talk to my audience and ask them what they want. So, you know, before I make a course, before I do a webinar, before I really do anything, I always pull my audience and see like, hey guys, you know, I'm about to spend some time creating a webinar. Which one of the five topics do you need most help with right now? I always, always, always ask. So that's been an up because a lot of what I've done has been successful. Um, also, you know, as a coach, seeing people, other people seeing their own potential. So when I work with someone, I see their potential right away, but watching them step into their own power and owning it. I mean, that's just like a high, unlike anything else. It's just so amazing to see that. Um, you know, just like helping somebody get healthy, like just seeing their transition from feeling tired and not good and not confident to like, wow, you know, like walking out the door like they're Beyonce. That's freaking amazing. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, those ups, it's a double edged sword because there's also those downs, you know, there's prospects, clients who don't see their own potential or who aren't ready to, you know, make the moves like it whether it's changing your business, changing your health, that's a decision that has to come from within. Um, And when you see someone's potential and they don't see it in themselves, I think that's one of the hardest things, you know, because you can't convince someone to do something, period. Um, And then the other thing is too, you know, like any business, you think you have the best idea in the world and you do it and it completely fails or nobody buys or nobody cares. And then, you know, you make like a stupid idea that you're like, who's going to like this? And everyone goes crazy. I'm sure you all can relate. And you're like, you, you like this? <laughs> what? Um, so I think, you know, definitely the ups and downs of that entrepreneurial roller coaster. It's the highest highs and the lowest lows. But in order to get through it, you have to be able to, you know, accept that you are going to have lows. And, you know, how do you push through it? So I think that's definitely been something that I've had to learn. And of course, you know, we were talking about this before the, sh- the recording, being your own boss. Man, I'm, I'm a really difficult boss to work for. So I, I got to learn to be nicer to myself. That's for sure. Well, I think you uh, you threw out some really great value bombs there that I think we can apply as chiropractors. I love the idea of sort of polling our clientele to see what they're interested in before we go forward with it. There are chiropractors who do weight loss and various other things, and if that's not something that there's a, a market for, but you've got it in your head that you're going to push that, you know, before you start buying inventory or supplements or things like that, it's probably a good idea to see what the market is for that. Um, you know, I think that cannot be, um, under <laughs> said enough, uh, there, it's because uh, so many people, you know, they build it and then they don't show up and you've already committed your time and money and things like that. And gosh, I totally spaced out the second thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut this part out. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good, though. You made a second point that I could totally relate to as a chiropractor. But <laughs> Wait, what was the point? Oh, the ups and downs? Hold on. Now I space. Um, <laughs> I totally lost my Oh, chance. seeing that potential. Oh, making the decision to get healthy, maybe? Oh, um, what was it that? Gosh, it was, it was polling the people, and <clears throat> I'll remember it like, in 40 convincing minutes, someone doing. yeah yeah safe <laughs> oh well that's okay well i'll edit this chit chat out and <laughs> smooth over it somehow <laughs> i've never done this before in an interview but i just totally blanked so i guess there's a first time for everything 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. So I went blank too. I was like, uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to move on to the next point. Um, all right, Yulia. So, how are you using social media to connect with your audience? Social media is where it's at. So, I really fully 100% of my audience is built on social media. I get 100% of my clients off of social media. Um, And what I'll say before I kind of get into my soapbox and talk about social media is it's a very powerful tool if you use it wisely. So, you know, when it comes to building a social media presence, I always say it's better to build out, you know, two social media platforms. So maybe like Facebook and Instagram, for example, um, and build them out strongly and have a presence there rather than trying to be all over the place and being neither here nor there. Um, so I'll definitely say that, but for me, Facebook has been a complete game changer. So, you know, Facebook groups right now, if you're in the health and wellness world, there is no better way to position yourself as an expert in front of, um, you know, a community of people that you've created, um, that you've attracted to you. And for me, my Facebook group, Health Coach HQ, it's truly been a game changer. And, you know, I'm in there every day hanging out with my audience, you know, seeing what's on their mind, seeing what they're struggling with, helping them, um, you know, with their struggles, celebrating their wins. It's really, really cool. And, you know, that's what kind of social media is all about. It's really attracting your community to you, sharing your journey, sharing that knowledge. Um, and again, it's a really great way to leverage yourself as an expert. So for me, Facebook group has been the best way to do that. Um, and of course, if you're, whether you're a local business or an online business, you know, Facebook ads are where it's at to drive traffic to you. Um, you know, I actually used to work at a yoga studio that also had a chiropractic office and we did Facebook ads for them and it was really, really successful. So, um, definitely using Facebook, I think is amazing. And Instagram as well. Instagram and Pinterest are so great for health, um, for health and wellness. So, you know, where the health and wellness coaches are, that's where I am too, because of course they're my ideal audience. But when I was a health and wellness coach, I mean, I shared everything. I would pour my heart out onto the internet, sharing my transformations, sharing my stories, sharing my health tips. It's just so cool to have a world of clients at your fingertips. Um, so social media is definitely a very, very powerful tool, whether you're a brick and mortar business or an online business. Well, I've seen you utilize video on there quite a bit. Do you do any Facebook Live or are these pre-recorded and uploaded? How are you doing that? Yeah. So one sec. Sorry, we're going to have to edit this out. It was kind of glitching. Okay. I think we're good now. Um, sorry. No so Facebook Live has Facebook Live has been a complete game changer for me. So, you know, I talked earlier about how it was very type A. So before when I would have to record videos and upload them online, I would seriously do like 10 takes. With Facebook Live, it has saved me so much time because you just go on live and it's amazing and you get to interact with your audience live. It's so powerful. And I think, you know, before that, really the only way to do that was um, through webinars. So it's really cool that anytime, any day, you know, whether you're in the park, whether you're at home and at a cafe, you can just go on Facebook live and interact with your audience right then and there. I mean, it's truly a game changer. Yeah. I, I think, um, you know, I think it's in terms of being a chiropractor, we have laws. We can't really, without permission, have our patients' information, private information out there unless you have them sign a release or something like that. So it's difficult just to sort of, you know, hold up our phone and do a video of our office and people coming in and get, getting treated unless they've signed releases, and which we can do. But I think there's so many quick health messages or tips or things like that that we can do as business owners. You know, hold up that camera and say, we've got openings today between two and four. Come on in or take a minute and talk about diet and exercise and the importance and how that affects brain function. Um, and just the very nature of it, um, you know, I because I'm not perfect by any means and especially when there's something recording you know we all get a little bit of stage fright and so it's really like i'm i have not done one yet and i know what i'm going to do is just 
fall on my face when I do it the first time. But what I've learned is, number one, everyone's very forgiving. And number two, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so authentic. I think that's part of why they're there forgiving. They're not looking for perfection or, or, or anything like that. Just authenticity and that connection. And I guess the third thing is we live in such a stream world. And what I mean by that is if it happened two hours ago, that's a really long time ago in social media time. You know, they saw it, they watched it, gone, and they're on to the next thing. So you might sit there and say, gosh, I really said something dumb and it went out live. But everyone forgot about it really quickly. Mm hmm. Absolutely. And people love, you know, being able to relate to somebody that's not, you know, picture perfect. And I think um, that just applies really for all industries. But in the health and wellness industry, too, I think there's just this pressure to be perfect all the time, whether it's on Facebook Live or being the perfect size or the perfect health or having the perfect body or the perfect diet or the perfect spine. And I think, you know, what I've learned um, and what social media has really helped, you know, is to be vulnerable online, to, you know, show all those imperfections and be damn proud of them. And you'll see that your followers really love that. They love being able to connect with you just as a regular person, sharing their story, sharing their tips. Yeah. And I think in our business, um, you know, being in healthcare, it's, it's, it works that way. You know, I wouldn't necessarily want to know how imperfect my car mechanic is because I want, to <laughs> you know what I mean? But in the people business, um, you know, everyone wants to know that we're good at what we do, but that we're real people too. And I think, yeah, that certainly makes it such a, I mean, it's a, it's a way of connecting that really didn't exist, you know, 10 years ago or, or longer. So let me ask you this in business. Do you have a mentor? Always, always, always. So I have several mentors. I'm always working with a coach. Um, I'm always uh, taking group courses. So it's hard to say if I have one mentor, but someone who I really look up to, and I know you did a podcast about him, is Tony Robbins. So is he my personal mentor? No. But um, I am listening to him every day. I love going to his events, and he's just completely changed my mindset um, when it comes to business. But I'll say, you know, whether you find someone to listen to and, you know, get inspiration from, um, always having somebody by your side, whether it's a coach or a consultant or whatever it is, has been such a game changer. I mean, yeah, I just noticed like there was one week where I was in between coaches and I was like, oh, like I'm getting withdrawal. Like it's, you know, it's so important to have that support and to have somebody having your back. So um, I've been blessed to have several different mentors in the mindset field, in the sales field, in the business field. Um, and I'm just always, I'm always looking for more. <laughs> Yeah, I, it, it's so important, especially Tony Robbins. I was watching something him the other night, and he was talking about um, in terms of business, 20% of it, of the success in business is mechanics, and 80% is really the headspace, the emotional mm-hmm. stuff that you have to get right. And it's so true because if you just look at the mechanics, it's a checklist. It's starting at number one and going all the way through. And if it was that easy, everyone would be a rock star in business. But it's not the case. It's so much about the other side because of how we are wired as human beings and whatever personal baggage or self-imposed limitations we have. So, yeah, I I cannot get enough of hearing someone who is doing the type of things he's doing, knocking it out of the park, and really reinforcing for me how you know what a great way of thinking is. Absolutely. And I mean, yeah, you can have world class strategies, the most expensive tools. But if your mindset isn't there, and if you're on the verge of like giving up every day, and if you don't celebrate your successes, and if you live in a mindset of where is the next client, you know, coming from and living in this place of uncertainty, I mean, it's self destructive to run your business like that. So I truly believe it's 80% mindset, um, if not more, it's so, so, so important to work on that in your business. And in fact, when I was working with my mindset coach for four months, she actually challenged me to not look at any new business information, to not take any business course, to not, you know, do anything. Cause she said, you have it all within you. It's just a matter of trusting yourself and having that certainty in yourself and that confidence that what you're doing is the right thing and the best thing. And I'll say it was 
life changing really because I'm always researching, I'm always looking for new information and you know, you think the more information you have, the more fancy, you know, tools you have, the better it is and it's so not the case. Like done is really better than perfect and getting yourself out there and having that certainty that no matter what, if, even if you don't get any clients this month and you get like 20 clients this month, you have that certainty in yourself to work hard, to show up and to do whatever it takes to succeed and in fact, um, I recently got a tattoo after my favorite quote, which is um, become the per- oh sorry, which is set your goals and become the person it takes to achieve them, and that has completely changed everything for me. <laughs> I like that. Is that a, who can you attribute that to anybody, or is that your own? I wish I could. No, I don't know where I heard it. Maybe I came up with it, but I really don't know who said it. And I tried to Google it, but no luck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it's an active process. At least it is for me to become the person that you can be. It doesn't just happen. Um, you know, like anything, it requires work and effort. So I, I love, I love that saying that you said. Uh, I want to ask you this: You've been so successful at building your personal brand online. What advice would you give those who are needing to do the same thing, or, or some people aren't even aware that they need to build a personal brand? But hopefully, the listeners to this show have realized that by now. What steps would you recommend for that? Yeah, so that's a, an amazing question and something that I'm so passionate about. Since I work with people who you know want to stand out in a very saturated market. There's one thing that you have that nobody else in the world has, and that's you, your personality, your story, your experience, the way that you've gotten results, um, the way you've gotten to where you are. And I think it's so important to lead with your story, to lead with you, and you really are the face of your business. And I'm sure you can relate. Um, there are people out there who have built such a great brand and, you know, who are so personal, um, that I don't even care what they're selling. I'm going to buy from them because I just love them so much and I want to support them. So, I mean, I think, you know, as a side note, that's really just the power of a personal brand and really putting your story out there. So one thing that I would say, if you're ready to stand out, understand that everyone has the same access to all of the same information. Google is out there, right? So there's a bunch of information on nutrition, on wellness, on, you know, everything. You can Google anything. So putting your own spin on it, leading with your story is the best thing that you can do. And, you know, if you're sitting here thinking, well, how do I start? I would literally start by sitting down, writing down a train of consciousness and saying, why are you doing what you're doing? What's the story? What got you here? And always finding ways to tie that in and tie in your perspective on everything. So like everyone's doing paleo. Great. What's your outtake on it? Why? Why do you think it's great or not great or whatever it is? So building a personal brand, it all starts with you and leading with your personality because there's enough people out there sharing generic information, right? You got to stand out and that's the number one way to do that. Great advice. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about your business. Where do you see it five years from now? <laughs> Question of the month. Um, so I really want to expand. So I just started uh, my group program, OM University or OMU, Organically Monetize You. And I really want to create that and build it out really big for health and wellness coaches to teach them you know, right now I'm only teaching the business side of the business, the business line of business, but eventually I'd love to teach health and wellness coaches how to coach, you know, more so that um, nutrition side of it and the wellness side of it and also the business side of it as well. Um, I really want to be speaking at events. I want to have my own events. I still want to be coaching. It's like my favorite thing in the world. Um, but I'd also, you know, five years from now, It'd be really awesome to diversify and, you know, have a couple of side businesses as well, whether it's real estate or investing into other businesses or whatever it is. I think that's really the cool thing about being an entrepreneur um, is that you can have several businesses and you can invest and you kind of choose choose what you want to do. But definitely upscaling what I'm doing now um, and just continuing to educate health and wellness um, professionals all over the world is my dream. 
Well, let's shift. I want to talk to you a little bit about your experience with chiropractic. You had mentioned that um, that you did some work for a chiropractor, but what is your personal experience with chiropractic? Yeah, so um, keep in mind, when I first started getting adjusted, it was like, just hop on the table, I'll adjust you. I was like, what are we doing? What is this? Um, and then all of a sudden, I left feeling better. And I was so lucky because this chiropractor was so passionate about educating people about how chiropractic works and how amazing it is. And when he was showing me subluxations and like did um, these demonstrations with like skeleton and how we work and everything like that, like my jaw just dropped. I was like, oh, my God, why isn't everyone going to a chiropractor? But, you know, after every session, I would walk away more energetic. My spine, like I had asthma. And so in that area around my chest, my spine was really tight and I would always kind of hunch over and my asthma got better. I started taking much deeper breaths. Um, my spine got, I hate saying the word straight because your, your spine isn't straight. It has curves, but let's say I grew a little bit taller. Um, I definitely got happier, more energetic. And something else that happened that I wasn't really expecting was um, a lot of emotional release went down as well. So I would sometimes leave and I'd be like, oh my God, in tears. And then I would just be like, even more happier after that emotional release. So um, really so many things changed, but I think definitely straight off the bat, my mood, my energy, my asthma. Um, and I would also actually say my brain fog completely disappeared. So I would sometimes have it and it was, you know, probably tied with my asthma as well, but no more brain fog ever, ever. Wow. What a great story. You know, as chiropractors, we see success stories like that. Um, not everyone, every time, but whenever we hear something like that, you can't hear it enough. So thanks so much for sharing that with us. Yeah, my pleasure. So as you know, this is a chiropractic business podcast. And with that in mind, we are all about providing actionable content for our listeners. So I've got two parts to this question. What is a the best action step or series of steps you would recommend for a chiropractor who's just starting out in business or one who's been in business for a while, but they're stuck? I would say to really stop and think about what makes you different and lead with that. Um, so, you know, definitely like we talked about earlier, focusing in on that ideal client, but also focusing in on what's unique about you. Why should somebody come to you versus any other chiropractor out there? Um, and really take some time to think about that and reflect on that and start to lead with that in your marketing, in the way that you talk to people, in the way that position, that the way that you position yourself to people. So maybe you are great with like the weight loss element. Maybe you're great, you know, maybe you're great with children. Maybe you're great with older, older adults, like whatever it is, um, position yourself as an expert in some way. So whatever makes you unique, lead with that. Um, Love it. You speak the truth. (laughs) (laughs) Well, sadly, we are coming to the home stretch of this interview. All good things must end. So I want to shift and talk about the bigger picture in life. Can you talk about a failure or challenge or obstacle you've had in life and how you've overcome it? Yes. Let me me think for a sec because I have so many. Um, I think for me, the biggest fail, and I wouldn't say it's failure because I learned so much from it, but I think um, when I first started out my business and I didn't know how to make a sale and I didn't know how to sell myself and um, I kind of just put myself out there and waited for people to come to me, I think for me that was a failure because I didn't know what I didn't know, but I also didn't make an effort to find that out. And in fact, I remember my boyfriend got me a book that said, you are a brand. I was like, what is a, what is a brand? Uh, Why are you getting me this book? (laughs) And, you know, I really had no idea. So I think for me in that sense, I failed because I didn't get out there and I didn't get the support that I needed to succeed. And that's why it took me two years um, and risking of giving it up altogether in order to finally see 
success. And so what I want to say is success is a decision. So if you've decided to open a chiropractic office or start whatever business that you want, you have to decide right now, is it going to succeed or not? And if you've made that decision that yes, it will, the only other decision that you have to make is when. And in order to expedite that timeline and succeed even quicker is get that support that you need. You know, take a business class, hire a business coach, um, hire, you know, any kind of person that you need to fill in the gaps that you don't have. Because once you've made a decision, that's it. You're going to do no matter what. Find ways to expedite the timeline that it takes. And that's something that I wish somebody told me because I was starting my business, you know, being neither here nor there and being like, well, it'd be great if it works. And if you go into business like that, then it's not going to work. It has to be a yes or a no. That's exactly right. And commit. Once you've made that absolute decision, you commit to it. And uh, I would say certainly if it's down, going down the wrong road, you figure it out quick, fail quickly, they say, <laughs> and, uh, and reassess and move a different direction. But yeah, you're absolutely right. C- kind of going in halfway, not such a great game plan. When it comes to success, oh, I'm sorry, I it cut out there for a minute. Oh, no, you're good. Okay. When it comes to success, who or what do you think of when you hear that word and why? I really think my man, Tony Robbins, just because he was somebody who didn't start out with the greatest circumstances. You know, like he said, he wasn't in the lucky sperm club. He had a lot of insecurities, some of which I also have. And he made the decision that I'm fucking going for it. I'm doing this no matter what. And I'm working on myself and working on my mindset and getting into that powerful mindset of I'm unstoppable no matter what. So for me, that determination and that stubbornness to succeed is something that I really, really, really look up to. And I think if you're going to have that level of success, you need to be extremely stubborn about it. (laughs) Well, do you have any rituals or daily habits, affirmations, things that you do every day that help you prepare and go through and be as stubborn as you say we need to be? Yeah, I do every day gratitude. So grateful for where I already am. I meditate daily, whether it's a guided meditation about um, success or finances or personal growth or personal well-being. And I also do visualization and actually try to feel what I will feel like when I'm where I want to be. Well, as we near the end of the show, do you have a favorite book you'd like to recommend to our listeners? Yes, there's always one book that I recommend to everyone, and that is called Switch by Chip Heath and Dan Heath. Let me restart that. There's one book that I recommend to everyone, and it is Switch by Chip Heath and Dan Heath. And I absolutely love this book because it really gets into the psychology of your consumers and the people who you're talking to. So if you want to be able to speak to someone's soul, you definitely need this book. Well, I will check that out. And of course, I will list that in the show notes so that uh, our listeners can check it out as well. What's the best business advice you've ever received? The best business advice that I've ever received is to just go for it no matter what. Just freaking go and, you know, make that decision and do whatever it takes you need to succeed. So if you need to learn how to make a website, learn how to make a website. If you need to learn how to make a Facebook ad, just do it. So do whatever it takes in order to make it. Such great advice. You know, I was, it sounds like uh, we share something in common and that is, you know, if you're a perfectionist or you, you're waiting for things to be perfect, you can wait an awful long time. And one of the things I've had to learn over my lifetime is, no, doing is more valuable than planning perfection. Just do it and go and fix it on the fly on the back end um, and be smart about it, but don't wait for perfection to, <laughs> before you launch. By then it's too late. Exactly. Exactly. 
Well, thanks, Yulia, for spending some of your valuable time with us here today. It's been great. I've learned so much. What's the best way for people to contact you and find out more about you, your coaching business, and what you do? Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, if you guys want to hang out more, you can find me at my website, yulirocks.com, Y-U-L-I-R-O-C-K-S. Or you can come hang out in my amazing community for health and wellness, entrepreneurs, healthcoachhq.com. Awesome. Well, thanks again, and we will uh, catch up with you online. Sounds good. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for listening to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast at www.cairobusinessmojo.com.